Hey guys, this is Kevin Lutman from Ion Films, and today we're going to be looking at how to use Canon T2i footage on a Mac to edit on Final Cut or After Effects or any other post production you may be doing. It's important to note that the Canon T2i um, and T1i and T3i, th this whole family and almost any other Canon, actually records a video in an H.264 codec. This codec is highly compressed and it doesn't play very nice with any post production application actually. So that's why there are other codecs out there that um, work a lot better with this and I'm going to show you what my workflow for doing this is. Um, so I've recently got to shoot a couple films on the T2i and this is why I'm making this video to help others out to show them that there is a, there's a better way of doing it than just taking the clips off the camera and cutting them in your whatever program you're going to use. So uh, what we're going to go in here and we're going to get started and the first thing that you're going to need is this program called MPEG Stream Clip. It's a pre-program. You can get it from the web. I'll put a link to it in the description. And this is going to let us convert our video files into the ProRes family. Uh, ProRes is Apple's line of codecs that work well pretty much with any application on the Mac and they're really nice codecs, a lot better than using H.264. So, um, to Let's get right into it. Um, I've got my film here. This one's called The Hacker 2. It's a working title. Um, I've made this 422 folder here. This is going to be to demonstrate. That's where I'm going to put some. Um, that's where I'm going to put the videos. And I've got uh, my program ready to go. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the program. You're going to get this window here. That's fine. We're going to go to List and Batch List. This is your batch list because you're probably going to have a lot of clips from your T2i that you're going to need to convert. So that's why we use the batch processor here. We're going to click Add Files. It's going to ask us, okay, which files do you want to add? I've already navigated to my folder where I have my clips, and I've actually marked the one that we're going to that I'm going to demonstrate this process with you today. Um, here's the clip. This is straight from the camera. That's the clip we're going to be using today. Um, I'm going to add this to batch. Normally you would add all of them, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to add this one. Click Add to Batch. We're going to export it as a QuickTime. Make sure that's selected. Click OK. We're going to get our destination folder. My destination folder is going to be this 422 folder right here. I'm going to select that. And now this is where everything happens. This is where we get to select what, what we're going to be converting this into. All of this stuff down here, you don't really need to touch it at all. We're, what we need to do is come up here. And what we're going to do, we're going to go all the way to the top of the list. And here we see we have the Apple ProRes family. There is the ProRes 4444, 422 HQ, 422, 422 Proxy, 422 LT. We're going to be using 422 because 444 is used for resolutions of 2K or higher. And since the T2i only shoots in HD, we need 422 because 422 is optimized for HD or lower. So these are the four different kinds of 422. This is the lowest quality one, and this is the highest quality one, as seen by the name. Um, I'm going to demonstrate what the differences are between all of these because it's really up to you to choose for your project what you think is the best value for your disk space. If the project isn't that important, you may consider doing it in a proxy or LT, but if quality is super important to you and you don't care that much about disk space on a project that you're doing, then the HQ or regular 422 is what you're going to want to go for. Um, I'm just going to, I'm actually, I'm going to export the same video in all of these and then we're going to I'm going to open them all up and we're going to compare them. So to demonstrate, I'm going to do, I'm going to start from the bottom and uh, I'm going to select 422LT. I'm going to put my frame rate and this was filmed at 30 frames. Everything else here, um, you just want to leave it as default unless you know what you're doing. There's really nothing else that you should need to touch. I'm going to add it to the batch. Okay, so once we have it in here and you would actually have all your clips in here, you would click go and it would convert it would, it would begin to convert to finish converting say complete so now we can close this program we'll close that program we go into 422 and we have our LT I mean our um, 
Yes, this is the 422LT. It's the lowest quality of 422. We can see that it looks good. I suggest you try this on your own because uh, of YouTube compression. It may distort the image more. But uh, it looks great. We only have a file size of 49.5 megabytes for about 4 seconds. You know, that's pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to export all the other ones too. Also, as all the other types of 422, and we're going to compare them. So I'm going to convert those all, and I'll meet you guys back then. Hey guys, we are back, and I've just finished converting all of the videos. So now we have one of all the four types of 222. There's a regular 422, 422 Proxy, 422LT, and 422HQ. Now, we're going to arrange these by size, and we can see that the Proxy is the smallest, while the HQ is the largest. And if we come back here to raw vids, and we look at the original video, now note that this video is in H.264. The original file size is only 24.4 megabytes. Now this is because it's compressed. Now the proxy is just slightly bigger than that, while the HQ is much larger than that. So we can see here that um, this is a much larger file size because it's not it's not compressed video. That means it's going to work a lot nicer for whatever editor you use. So let's take a quick look and see if we can notice any differences between these. And again, I urge you to go try this yourself because YouTube will um, make the distortion a lot larger than it actually is. So let's open the 422 proxy. That's large. And let's open the LT as well. Try to make them about the same size. So at first glance, the reality is I'm not really noticing anything different. Um, you would probably have to view these full screen to really see anything different. But right here in the small frame, there's really nothing different. So we're going to go ahead and full screen this. We're going to play through it. Great. And that was the proxy, by the way. Now let's try the LT. Zoom in. Try to go through it. Not much of a difference there. Um, I think the biggest difference you will see, though, is between the proxy and the HQ. So we'll open, we'll open up this. This is the HQ. We'll see if we can... Uh, the frames to align here. So here's the proxy and here's the HQ and here there is actually some noticeable difference. You can you can actually notice it in the face. It's very slight but the colors in the LT they are more they, there's basically more colors here. You can almost notice it. It seems that the colors have to sort of bunch up around here. Um, it's still there. It's quite hard to notice the difference um, there is some, you notice a difference up here in the hair, sort of, just a bit, as well as in the shadows over here. They are slightly, they, they do slightly look better in the, uh, HQ version of it, but when it comes to, um, the file size, is it really worth it to go HQ? Um, there, is there a difference here? Evidently there is. There, there's definitely a difference between the proxy and the highest quality one. So that's why if you don't really care about you know the quality that much and you're not going to be presenting this on a large television, generally the LT or the regular, which you know just looks slightly better than the than the LT, would be actually fine to use. Um, a proxy if you want to keep it small, you don't really care that much about the video. Um, HQ if it's really important to you and you know you're going to be showing this on large screens and such. That's great, but you know if you're just going to be uploading your video for YouTube, make a choice between uh, you know regular or LT. You should probably uh, also take into account the different lighting. I mean, if it's if it's um if it's a lot darker, you're probably going to get better quality out of the HQ than you are the LT or the regular. So you know choose wisely. But it's always better to use any of these than it is to use this raw uncompressed video of it because this will it'll take up a lot of power just trying to preview through this in pretty much any editor. So that will conclude the video for today. Um, I hope you learned that uh, using these
proxies and these 422s, these LTs, these HQs are much better than uh, using the actual raw, the raw video from the camera. This is a much better idea. You're going to get better performance out of it. Go try. It's sort of hard to demonstrate that in just a video. You really have to feel it. Um, you'll really feel that your system has more power if you do decide to use these videos, these uh, these these codecs. I mean, so uh, thanks for watching. And if you guys have any questions, just leave them down below, and I'll try to answer them best I can. Thank you.